Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's good to see each and every one of you here today as we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus as he came in human flesh to be like you and me. But you begin by singing our opening hymn 387, Joy to the World. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate God's love on the eve of the birth of our Savior Jesus. We know that our sin was the reason for his coming to earth. As we reflect on our sins, we realize that Jesus came to this earth to suffer and die on the cross. But he suffered and died so that we can be forgiven. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary so that he could die for us and for his sake forgive us all our sins. As a called ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. 
I now invite any children forward for a special message. Well, Merry Christmas, friends. Merry Christmas. Oh, you guys don't sound very excited about Christmas. Huh? Should I try this again? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. You know, I was in the school library the other day, and I found a, one of my favorite books, The Tale of the Three Trees. Once upon a mountaintop, Three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. The first one looked up at the stars, twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Years passed. The rains came. The sun shone. And the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, this tree is beautiful. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship fit for kings. The third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. She stood tall and straight and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter shop. But the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. Too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river, he was taken to a little lake. Every day he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in a lumber yard. What happened, the once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. 
This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. Who's that? Baby Jesus, right? Now, One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. Soon a thundering and thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace. The storm stopped so quickly as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. The th one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beans were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. And that was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to be our Savior. Thank you for stories like the tale of the three trees so that we can see how great your, your sending your Son was to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, I got a treat for you before you head back, okay? Here you go. Our first reading comes to us from Genesis chapter 3. You can find it on page 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired and to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. We continue by singing hymn 370. What child is this?
We now turn to Micah chapter 5 on page 993. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. We continue with him 361, O little town of Bethlehem. We turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, on page 1032. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. We continue with a special trio. darkness, mercy pierced my heart with love. 
We now turn to the Christmas story on Luke chapter 2 on page 1096. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We turn to him 364, away in a manger. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. We continue with hymn 366. It came upon the midnight clear. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue by singing hymn 388, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did anyone here, maybe growing up, ever want to be like someone? Anyone? Anyone want to tell us what they wanted to be like? Go ahead, Nolan. Shout it out. Oh, I knew that was coming. Tom Brady, I knew that was coming from him. All right. Anyone else you want to tell us you wanted to be like? Like in our tale, the three trees, the three trees, one wanted to be a treasure box, one wanted to be a ship, and one wanted to be the tallest tree in the world. What did you want to be when you were younger? What did you want to be like? Like Mike, there we go. Want to be like Mike. Yeah, we got a whole song for Dan. Yeah, yeah. An astronaut, yes. She is out of this world. Yes, yes. Go ahead. John Cena, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Reese. That was awesome. Um, anyone else? Carl, oh, I should have known that was coming from Will. Yep, yep. All right. Well, we're here tonight because Adam and Eve wanted to be something they were not. Did you notice it in our first reading? The serpent. Its temptation was, for God knows that when you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Adam and Eve wanted to be like God. That didn't work out so well, did it? We're here today celebrating the birth of our Savior because we still want to be like God. Look at some of your Christmas plans. How many of them are hectic? How many of them are out of your control? How many of them don't go the way you want them to turn out? How many of them have left you stressed out? Or just take an even bigger view of your life. How many things in your life do you wish you could change? How many things do you wish were different in your life? Maybe it's a disease. Or do you wish that someone was still alive with you in this world? Or maybe it's a bad relationship, or a different home, or a family problem, or a different job, or a different amount in the bank account. How many times do you work and work and pray and pray for things to go well, and then they fall flat on their face? We still want to be like God. And too often we're reminded that we are not, and that we cannot be like God. Adam and Eve may have started us on this wrong path, but we contribute to the sinfulness of the world in our own lives. And we often foolishly think to ourselves, you know, if I was in control of things, it would be much different. But the things that we are in control of perhaps would say the opposite. But we're also here today because God became like you and me. Think what an amazing thing to think about. We wanted to be like God, but Christmas is a celebration that God became human. I think it's a profound thought to me. The angels had to proclaim his birth to the shepherds. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Our Lord came down for you and me in this baby in the manger. God became a human being. God became like you and me. The shepherds had to tell everyone what they saw and heard. It was almost unbelievable. God is in human flesh. He became like a common villager. He became part of the tribe of Judah and the family of David. God was above the trivialness of this world. He was ruling in heaven over his creation, and yet he became human. And he had to sometimes avoid catching a cold. He had to do simple household chores. He had to learn how to use the bathroom. He needed to crawl around on the floor and then learn to walk. He needed to have human skin and have human nerves so he could feel pain like you and I. He needed to come to be like you 
so that he could be your Savior. And he came even to die as humans die. He did it in a most gruesome death on the cross. His death, though, may not be like yours because he died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. But three days later, he rose from the dead, doing something that only God and human flesh could do. He defeated death from the inside out. He became human to give you victory over everything that weighs you down. He became human so that you could have salvation from that never-ending cycle of wanting to be like someone or something else. Perhaps what might be most interesting of all, Jesus became human because we, with Adam and Eve, wanted to be like God. So God became like you. Then he died and rose from the dead and leaves you with a very important promise that you one day will be like him. You will be like God, living forever in his heavenly kingdom with victory over sin, death, and the devil. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now continue our worship with the gathering of our offering. We continue our worship with our prayers and our prayers. Remember those listed in our bulletin. We also pray for uh, Billy Avery, who is currently hospitalized. Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. On this most holy night, in awe at the wonder and majesty of the Incarnation and thanksgiving that the Savior of the nations has come, let us pray to the Lord that the proclamation of Christ's birth would sound forth throughout the world, that God would give faithful pastors to his church to proclaim these good tidings, and that he would give his people willing ears to hear and believe. Let us pray to the Lord for peace in all homes, that our Heavenly Father, who revealed Jesus' identity and Mary's fidelity to Joseph, would richly preserve all families with his word, and grace to live in love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For good government, that God would move all authorities to govern in service to the will of David's Son and Lord, and that places like Israel and Ukraine can know true peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For generosity, that the Father who loves us and sent his Son as the propitiation for our sins would perfect his love in us to show kindness to those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from affliction, that God who sent Jesus to save us from sin's curse would hear the pleas of all who call to him for mercy, including Billy, Wendy, Eileen, Elaine, Judy, Stacy, David, Jerry, Helen, Carol, Helen, Shirley, Ridge, 
Marion, Bruce, Anita, Barb, Iona, Sarah, Eugene, Mary, Lauren, and Linda. And that he would rescue them from trouble and preserve them in the hope of the resurrection in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For emergency workers and all whose vocations keep them from their families for our well-being this evening, let us pray to the Lord. For thanksgiving of our opportunities to share Jesus with others, for our school that we can be a beacon of hope to our community, let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn, including the family of Phil, that they may be comforted with the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, you have given your Son, born of Mary, to be the Savior of the world. Send your Spirit and abide with us, that we may confess him and remain in your love until he comes again in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now continue with the lighting of our candles. Light's importance was shown on the very first day of creation. And God said, But then humans corrupted God's creation with sin. We needed something greater than created light. We needed the light of the world to come and shine in our lives forever. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the darkness has not overcome it. Christmas is the celebration that the light of the world has come. The people who walked in darkness those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world.
Now as we celebrate his birth, we await the light's return. Now as we celebrate his birth, we await the light's return. And the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. And night will be no more. They will need no light of a lamp or sun. Sing to the Lord a new song. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may extinguish your candles and Hopefully uh, we'll get our lights back on and we'll sing our closing hymn 380, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Please be seated. Well, it's good to have each and every one of you here this afternoon as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus, who came to be like us so that we could be like him in everlasting life. Um, we've got our Christmas Day service tomorrow at 9.30 that you're all welcome to join us for. Any other announcements? Oh, Nolan was just putting his jacket on. I thought I was going to announce something about Tom Brady back there. Yeah. All right, let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Have a blessed Christmas celebration.